How's it going guys? In this video we're going to do a quick review of intermolecular forces. So first off we're going to have London dispersion forces, dipole-dipole forces, hydrogen bonding forces, and ion dipole forces. So basically I think some of the important things to know here are the order of strength, uh, what is the strongest, what's the weakest, and then you want to be able to eventually look at a compound and then figure out what types of intermolecular forces it's going to have based on the three-dimensional structure, aka the molecular geometry. So first off, we have London dispersion, which is basically just present in all atoms and molecules. It's just across the board. If you see any kind of compound ever, it's going to have London dispersion forces. And I think that that's basically prorated to the number of atoms or molecules. Uh, so larger, like larger compounds are going to have more London dispersion force than a smaller molecule, for example. Um, but in general, everything has them. Then for dipole, dipole, it's essentially just opposing charges within the molecule. Uh, like so HCl is a really common example there. Um, one side, the hydrogen is slightly more positive and the other, the Cl is slightly more negative. And then they kind of can have different kinds of interactions as a result of that. Then for hydrogen bonding, that's pretty self-explanatory, but I think the most important thing to remember here is what can hydrogen bonding occur between. So obviously it's gonna be hydrogen, but it's F-O-N. So I had one professor say, you can remember that as chemistry is fon. Uh, it's kind of silly to me, but you know, whatever you remember it, F-O-N, those are the three elements that hydrogen bonds can form between. Um, and obviously water is the most common example of this. There's interactions between the water molecules as they like pass over each other and around each other. And um, these are going in order of increasing energy this way. So London dispersion being the weakest, dipole next, hydrogen bonding next, and finally ion dipole is going to be the strongest. Um, ion dipole basically has to do with, so it's mixtures of ionic and polar compounds. And these are common in solutions, but as I, it's kind of difficult to explain, I think. But basically, it has to do with differences in charges between things. And they have stronger associations because they're pulled by the charges as opposed to just being hydrogen. Or for instance, the dipole-dipole, where there's multiple, uh, within the same molecule, different types of charges. These are almost like a more extreme version of that. But uh, yeah, that's kind of like a brief overview. I'm going to put this to the side, and then we're going to go through a whole bunch of problems that will be, I guess I'll put this to the side. Um, we're going to go through a bunch of problems that are going to be kind of, might seem really easy, but I think they're just kind of good to know. So, um, which intermolecular forces um, do these molecules have? So the first one, I2. So here we are, we just have I2. Uh, you can draw it out if you want to, it seems really obvious, but basically this is just gonna be dispersion forces. Because knowing um, I2, it's two of the same element, it's not gonna have a dipole, it's obviously not gonna have hydrogen and ion dipole is, is out of the question as well, because we're just looking at a single element here uh, that's a diatomic. So now we have London dispersion because, like I said before, dispersion are in all molecules. Now we're going to have, um, let's see here. Hydrogen peroxide. So sometimes your professors are going to want you to know like certain the, the names of certain compounds. Um, but in case anyone didn't know, this is H2O2. Um, it's pretty common. And uh, this is going to be a little bit trickier for people to, to necessarily know. But basically H2O2 is going to have, I mean, you can, you can take your guess, but first of all, everything is going to have dispersion. Then next, we're going to have dipole-dipole, which is based on the shape of the H2O2. And then finally, as we can tell from here, it's got hydrogen, it's got an oxygen. It's very similar to water, obviously, it just has an extra O. Um, so that is gonna be hydrogen bonding. It tends to be that if something has 
uh, you know, hydrogen bonding, it also will qualify for dipole dipole. And then of course it's gonna have London dispersion as well. Um, but yeah, so next we can go, so we'll go down. And, you know, I'll scoot this down and then I'll do it over here. So for three, we're gonna have, let's see here, CH3, O, CH3. So for this one, you can take your best guess and then um, it's gonna have dispersion forces and it's gonna have dipole dipole. But this one does not have hydrogen bonding even though you can look at the compound and tell that there's an O and there's an H. What it ends up being is that each of the, the C's, let's see if I can draw this here. It's gonna be kind of like one of these. So we have the O in the middle. The hydrogens are not bonded to the O, so there won't be hydrogen bonding. And then you've got the, the dipole dipole. And so now we'll keep going down. Let's see here. Four, we're gonna have C6H14. So that's a, a much larger molecule than some of the other ones that we've done so far. It's, it's uh, quite a large molar mass uh, comparatively. Um, however, it's gonna be pretty straightforward. I mean, you can just draw it one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you can just count up the, all the hydrants, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Right there from you, from this shape and everything, you can tell that this is just going to be dispersion because nothing in that is, I mean, this is just an organic carbon chain. Nothing in there is creating a dipole situation and there's obviously no chance for ion dipole or hydrogen bonding. So that's pretty straightforward. I think sometimes it can throw people um, if we have, you know, a, a very large molecule, you might assume that there's um, more different types of intermolecular forces, when in reality, there's just a, a theory, theoretical greater amount of dispersion forces than, for example, um, like a, a carbon chain that's, I don't know, C3, H8. Those are just the hydrogens coming off it. But obviously the, the larger of these two is gonna have more molecules that are contributing to the, the London dispersion force. Um, so if you were to compare them that way, we're gonna actually get into that, I think a little bit further down, but, um, or, or in the next video maybe, but um, comparing these. But so here we go for five, we'll do liquid uh, propanol, which is gonna be CH3, CH2, CH2, OH. So here you see that hydroxide on the end. Um, it looks like it's probably just a carbon chain. So like one, two, one, two, three, OH. It's got that OH though. And it's not, it's a, uh, It doesn't look equal on both sides. It's it's a it's asymmetrical, which isn't really the best way to determine if it's going to be dipole dipole. But in this case, it will be. Um, so we're going to have the dispersion forces, dipole dipole, and hydrogen bonding. Okay, now we're gonna work our way down to the bottom here. Number six is going to be CO2, SO3, and CH4. So these ones are kind of oddballs. I'm lumping them together like this uh, because they're, I think they're really important to keep in mind. Um, because of their polarity, so this is just something that you'd have to kind of know um, whether or not, like, you know, hopefully you're told this at some point, but 
all of these are considered nonpolar. And because they're nonpolar, just the, the way that their geometry is, it's going to make it that there is no dipole, dipole, or hydrogen bonding, despite the fact that they might otherwise seem like they could have those things. Um, so for instance, like H2O is going to have obviously hydrogen bonding. It's going to have the dipole theoretically, and then it's also going to have London dispersion. Um, but just switching that for, for CO2, you know, it's not, it's a pretty similar, I mean, it's got some of the, it's got, they both got oxygen, but it's not, it won't qualify for hydrogen bonding and it won't qualify for anything other than dispersion. So these are kind of ones to watch out for. Obviously you can negate that it has any kind of hydrogen bonding going on if it doesn't have F, O, or N with the hydrogen. Um, and then dipole, dipole is a little bit easier to know if you're looking at the charge. Um, you can kind of, you know, see the molecule, see where they are on the periodic table. But like I said, it's always good to keep in mind every single molecule or every single atom is going to have the London dispersion forces. So the more of them there are, the, the greater that's going to be in total if you're comparing two very similar substances. So yeah, uh, I think that that pretty much concludes this video. Um, hopefully this helps someone. This is just kind of meant to be a brief overview and um, we're going to get into a little bit more of the specifics in future videos. Hope this helps someone.